Now for the second part of my talk, which is response assessment in myeloma. And fortunately for me, the IMWG has recently published consensus criteria in 2016. As we know, the last set of criteria were published as far back as in 2006. With older therapies including autologous stem cell transplant, less than half the patients will achieve a complete response at that time. As we all know, treatments of myeloma have come a long way since then and many new drugs and combinations have led to unprecedented response rates and depth of responses in our patients with myeloma. Consequently, new methods were urgently required to detect and quantify the level of minimal residual disease beyond the detection of the present clinical response criteria and the definition of disease response needs to be revised for it to remain relevant in the current treatment scenario. It would also be useful in comparing various drugs and combinations. The association between depth of response and long-term outcomes is a hotly debated topic in myeloma at the moment. The relationship between CR and progression-free survival or time to progression has been more consistent than the relationship between CR and overall survival. The level of MRD undetected by conventional methods is probably one of the most important features contributing to the link between the depth of response and long-term outcomes, independent of the type of method used to detect MRD. Nevertheless, a meta-analysis published in 2007 reported a significant correlation between achievement of CR and improved overall survival. We now have increasingly sensitive methods for the evaluation of bone marrow aspirates including multicolor, multicolor flow cytometry and next generation sequencing in an effort to increase the sensitivity with which we could detect the myeloma cells. Such methods allow the quick examination of several thousands of millions of cells in the bone marrow allowing a small number of residual myeloma cells to be detected. Both these techniques have been incorporated in the newer criteria to define disease response which is deeper than the current response of criteria to complete of complete response. The cutoff for these techniques has been set at 1 in 100,000 myeloma cells out of the total nucleated cells counted. This is the table to response criteria published by the International Myeloma Working Group and it has been divided into the standard response criteria that we, that we have been using uh, and have been using all these years uh, versus the newer uh, response criteria. The definitions of partial, very good partial or VGPR, complete response and stringent CR will continue to remain. In this publication what has been changed is the MRD criteria and the next slide shows the added criteria in more detail. Starting from the bottom is the imaging plus MRD negative category. We know myeloma cells can exist outside the bone marrow and this category needs not only MRD negative but also needs disappearance of every area of increased tracer uptake found at baseline PET CT. Also it needs MRD negative in the bone marrow by NGF or NGS. Another category that has been introduced is the sustained MRD negative disease. To be in this category, you not only have to have MRD negative by NGS or NGF, but also have this confirmed a minimum of one year apart. Subsequent evaluations are also allowed, but have to specify the duration of negativity. There are three main goals of these criteria. The first and the most obvious is to measure a response that is deeper than the conventional CR, which would give us a measure of the depth of disease response as a in a particular patient who has had with their current therapy. Secondly, these criteria are aimed to be used as surrogate endpoints for clinical trials. What happens at the moment is that these trials would use progression-free survival or overall survival as their endpoint to assess various drug and their combinations. This could take a long time with drugs getting better and improving, and improving response rates to see if the particular drug or combination is useful or better than the previous drug. If we had a way to consistently measure depths and have firm criteria, that would uh, lead to them being used as surrogate endpoints for faster drug approvals and faster entry of trial drugs into our clinics. And finally, the final goal is to see if we can change the way we treat a particular patient based on these response criteria. If our patient has had a deeper response based on MRD, we are going to stop therapy, reduce therapy or continue in the same way. Are we heading towards a more individualized approach based on these criteria? To conclude, the diagnostic criteria and treatment indications for multiple myeloma is an evolving area of medicine and lately, lately we've been treating myeloma earlier 
and aiming for much more deeper and meaningful responses. Our search for a cure though continues. Thank you.